not to be cut up. Meaning to say, meaning to say, if I will explain, your expectations are so high that we in government should not be corrupt. Our expectations are equally so high that you, the business community, should not be corrupt and should not even attempt to corrupt us. Let me tell a little bit of the background there where I'm coming from. I've never been in government before. And the first time I was in government was three years ago when I was assigned to the Clark Development Corporation. And exactly I mentioned this there and I said, you want us not to be corrupt, do not corrupt us. You want us not to be corrupt, do not bribe and bind yourself through us and gain our patronage. So that if we can have a working relationship, and I have demanded that this at the Clark Development Corporation, and some of you have experienced this with me. Walahong regalo at any time of the day, any time of the week, any week of the month, any month of the year, any year at all, or whatever occasions. Whether it is Christmas, whether it is Valentine, the birthday of my wife or the birthday of my girlfriend. Walang regalo at hindi namin tatakapin and don't even attempt. And so I said, if you do not wish us to be corrupt, you yourself must bear the burden of not seeking to corrupt us. Avoid inviting us for dinner. All of us know what happens during dinner. Like you, I must was once upon a time also a businessman. Don't even invite us for dinner. If there is a need, the name of the game is simple. That's three. Let me explain. If you want the needs coming from us, the perception must be such that you deserve that permit. The perception must be such that you got the permit because you are qualified, you are deserving. It should never be the perception that a permit is given you simply because you come to my office bearing gifts, inviting me for lunch, inviting me for dinner. I ask you business community, you expect us not to be corrupt. Can we expect from you not to corrupt us? Please state your name, your industry, and... My name is uh, Ben Kurumbayan. I'm an accountant. 
Well, the question uh, may seem to be simple, but I think there's a cultural content in it. It means that if you say that you hire somebody from your competitor, based on the, our culture, there is an expectation that there will be some kind of uh, better kind of treatment between those two parties. And I don't know what the solution is, but that's how I would try to explain it. Before you ask the question about we want you to be corrupt and we, are we prepared not to corrupt you? I think most citizens would like to do that, but it becomes a battle of wills. Because if you're talking in terms of at your level, that will be easy to deal with. But if you talk in terms of a lower level, it becomes a battle of wheels because what you want to get from the government, you cannot get until, you know, after a long extended uh, period of time. So something has got to give, either the uh, citizen or the uh, official. So who's going to be, who is it going to be? If a person really wants to get something so badly, then you have no other choice. So maybe what we can do is the people at, at the top, the cabinet level, should send those people down below that they should not be doing those things also. But the trouble is there must be some kind of effective mechanism to make that happen. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I can react on. Uh, that's true. What is the solution? The solution is you must learn how to trust the top in the excellence. Uh, as I said, this happens at the Clark Development Corporation before. Nobody trusted my rocket file. They said, you will be clean, but the rocket file will be dirty. You want us to police them? I'm asking you now to tell us who among the rank and file, who among our rank and file are on the take and who are making it difficult on you. The moment we ask that and we ask document, I know who you must have been. Again, if culture has to be addressed, that same culture will have to be equally addressed. The no corruption is a dance of music by all, with all of us dancing to the same tune. You expect us, and gladly so, at the Department of Transportation, I will do that from top to bottom. What you hear from me, they will hear from me. And I will insist that they follow me. If not, I can be very unforgiving when it comes to corruption. In the same token and way, if we do this to our people, tell your people not to corrupt any of our people of the same rank and of the same level. Madali hong sabihin na minsan, linagyan namin si rank and fight B, anak ng peteng, wala naman ibinigay. You know, that is also a reality. Oh, you have to watch out for that. The chains of culture must be equally danced not only by the people in government, but equally so by people in business. I dare say this because once upon a time, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I was part of the business community. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my question is, how can government and industry or business work together so that um, benefits from technology can hasten grow, particularly in the regions. Excuse me, uh, I mentioned Serenia, I'm representing Phoenix. I just want to go back to the uh, statement of uh, Secretary Fidani. I think uh, yesterday it was also mentioned about, you know, this is a long-term solution. But everything actually boils down to moral fiber. 
I think we have to start with education, training our children. No? I mean, formative years are 1 to 10 years old. If you go to other countries like Japan, honesty is inculcated in the children. It's long term. So we have to get people, even in government or in any, any other institution, that has good moral fiber. And it starts with good education and in the family. I think, I know if we think about business, we think about all other things, but it really boils down to education and bringing our children the right way. Just a comment. I uh, agree, ma'am, 100%. When I joined Clark, pardon me for talking about my experience because these are valid experiences. True. When I joined CDC, my first act of business was not to tell them what my plans and programs were. For the very simple reason that I did not have any program or plans at that time because I never knew I would be appointed to the Clark Development Corporation. So what was the first agenda of business? It was all about culture, values, and ways of doing things. For several months, for several months I said, you better not be late. The name of the game is punctuality. I do not believe in the so-called Filipino time. Observe that, you'll get it from me. I said, this is government service. Whether you have problems at home, with your wife, with your querida, with your enemies, for so long as you are behind the desk of government service, you must learn how to smile. Very basic. Punctual and smile. I said, Hindi pwede ang pwede na. And I said, Hindi pwede ang pura. Ang sinabi ko pa ho, Hindi pwede ang chismoso. Ang chismoso, pang alaboso, ang intriguero, pang impyerno. I also told them and I required them to sing the national anthem, not hear the national anthem. I said, you have to sing the national anthem. And at the end of the phrase, nang mamatay nang dahil sa nyo, in heaven's name, you must feel that. And so it all started from the basic. I agree with you man, 100%. Everything must start from the basic and from the fundamental. And hopefully, from the fundamental and the basic, we can go a culture, and you can grow after having a culture, a habit. And when you have a culture and a habit, then you have a discipline. And right now we are talking of discipline of honesty. Can I just, uh, very quickly, I'm Peter Perfect, the president of the Living Initiative. Um, it's this club. I just... I just want to confirm that I sang the national anthem with the uh, incoming Secretary Bugani when invited Integrity Initiative to the Clark Development Corporation, where it required every employee to recite also the Integrity Pledge as well and to sign the Integrity Pledge. And maybe that is the challenge to us today. When we launched the Integrity Initiative um, in uh, 2010, um, by, by last April, we only had 3,000 corporate signatories. And I would um, think that most likely, more than half of the people here have not yet signed that pledge. So I think the challenge to us all is to sign. It may not be our integrity pledge, but I think every corporation should sign an integrity pledge and make a commitment not to bribe and to pay the right taxes from here on. Thank you. Somebody is paid for the group because he likes to do that. And when we go, we 
but he said for me to be going to go, go America. So, one small thing, but back to your question uh, about uh, implementing all kind of technology. Well, the thing is, we live on a global world. Know-how is everywhere available, but my experience in general in the Philippines, they don't want to pay for consultancy. They don't want to pay for know-how. So create a budget to, uh, to hire know-how. It's everywhere around. And don't reinvent a wheel. That's useless. And we would like your knowledge, presence, or secretary, uh, Mark Villar, the EPWH. Yes. The industry in itself has a lot of expertise, and so uh, we can probably we can probably uh, avail of that expertise. In fact, uh, in a separate conversation, I've offered my services to Secretary De La Pena on a pro bono basis to be an industry uh, advisor. But I think the other part that we can do really would be to have a partnership not just between industry and DOSP, but also in other agencies of the government. What do I mean? For example, if there are companies that are willing to uh, donate equipment and uh, even technology to the academy, which should be a partner in this endeavor also, then maybe the Department of Finance can look at uh, how to incentivize that and not penalize the company. Or for example, we need um, faster, bigger bandwidth and faster internet speed for data transfers, maybe the, the new DICT can facilitate that working with DOST. So in essence, I think it's going to need a partnership among not just the industry, academia, and government, but specifically the government agencies working with each other. Thank you. Does anyone else have an answer to how we can develop technology? Um, I'm, I'm Dr. Carl Belinda. Um, sir, I have hosted a show in DZM and BBSCBN for 16 years. And there is a program that I love to recommend that you intensify as the new DOSD secretary. And that's the setup, the small enterprise technology upgrading program of the DOSD. I have been witness to how the micro and small enterprises are assisted with technology. However, the coming of Secretary Juan Lopez, who is also a champion of small and micro, should realize that even if the micro and small enterprises are upgraded in terms of their technology, there comes the need to improve the market and the market reach. The DDI's effort of creating only trade fairs for some orgasmic sales does not sustain it. And I'm therefore proposing, sir, you may look at the one store project of the DOST, which is now trying to create a hub for all the DOST set of assisted projects uh, all over the country. The encounter that I had with the micro enterprises when they guess in my show is fine, they already have their technology with them but they are still moping in the dark for the markets that they can reach, not only in their areas, but also in the country and the ASEAN. That's my answer there. Th thank you very much, Bob. I hope you will sustain the one store in the SETA project of the DOST. Thank you. Is anyone else? Uh, George C., uh, representing the PCCI, the Federation of Filipino Chinese. The, uh, we, we have experience with a lot of uh, softwares and technologies being used currently by the government. I think we have to congratulate the government in the last few years for having uh, made accessible a lot of certifications and verifications through the web, which has saved a lot of time. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of the agencies, uh, there is no standards or uh, standards or benchmarks for the way the softwares that they put in so that they do not communicate and each of them have to be repeated even within the same agency 
and it's uh, taking a lot of time, a lot of money, and they're charging this for. Um, it has been very useful if we can uh, standardize this uh, between the different agencies, which I guess the DICT is good for. Uh, second is uh, making accessible these uh, information to the public, and uh, actually money can be made because uh, the agent, uh, businesses are willing and people are willing to be charged for these services as long as it's not uh, too much. A uh, third point I would like to make is that uh, information itself is not uh, is useful in pre uh, increasing efficiency and preventing corruption to some extent. But to a lot of extent, uh, apart from the information, maybe we can create an incentive and disincentive structure. Because even if you go after the personnel or organization that is deliberately this, uh, delaying something, if we don't have benchmarks, so they can take forever and the cost to business is uh, very extensive. Uh, and there's no disincentive because the worst they get is a slap in the wrist. Now, in some countries, I don't know in what form, but uh, government or the people involved, if it uh, appears to the, at the level of negligence, then they have to take some sort of liability or share some of the cost of that delay. But uh, just to point out that the uh, incentive structure is also important. Thank you. Can I go back to the comment that you just made? Um, I quite agree that uh, education is very, very important. But I think we also appreciate the fact that education is not only the responsibility of the formal education system set up by the government. Education of a child starts in the home, in churches, in institutions, and also education is transmitted by the elders to the younger members of society, in the family, in the schools, and in the offices. Um, I would like to emphasize this because sometimes if a catastrophe occurs, we say the children were not educated anymore about climate change. If there is graft and corruption, they are not educated about graft and corruption. If a certain candidate gets so many million votes, it's the fault of education. Or if they are not healthy, it's the fault of education. But education is our responsibility as a society. We help educate each other. And only the role of government is to provide the formal system. Um, I'd also like to point out that there are real reforms in the education sector which have been going on since 2012 with the inclusion of kindergarten into the form implemented and which leads me to my uh, question since we are all asked to raise questions to our colleagues in the business sector um, my question is how can the formal educational system and the business sector work together to enrich the senior high school or pre-college program which is now being introduced and to make it meaningful and responsive to the needs not only of family but also to the economy and to industry. Thank you. Anyone want to answer? Yes, yes, may I? Uh, in the same model, let me state your name. Yeah. I mean, uh, by since what? In the same model of asking the question of uh, Secretary de la Peña. If, you, if the cabinet members you just regionalize or localize this process, this process of asking the business sector in the constituency on the regular, and even in the media, with the media presence, or at least um, uh, on a t t TV, on a, on a tri-media tri -media cover, it would be a very, very good uh, you know, a good process for us. Synergy of the business and the, the scientific community, the, the, the 
academic community for education. Just regionalize this process would be very much thankful. Thank you. Uh, can I? Are you recognizing me? Okay, so please state your name. Yeah, I'm uh, Alberto Fredish Jr. Uh, I'm uh, honorary president of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And since 2014, the PCCI established the PCCI Human Resources Development Foundation. And we have been working with the Department of Education and with TESTA uh, precisely on trying to bring in business into the education and training system that they should be more active in it. And uh, right now, uh, in terms of the senior high school program, uh, we have done some pilot projects in Cebu and in uh, Agas and in San Pedro Nacada on trying to put in a dual, dual training system in the senior high school uh, grades 11 and 12. And uh, the results of those Pilot projects, we will try to uh, we will try to uh, replicate that in the other regions of the country. So we are already working with you, Madam uh, 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 Secretary. Okay. Good afternoon, Your Honors. My name is Ray Marman Sinungan. I represent uh, PCCI Pasay and the PDP Laban Kamalinis Norte. Uh, the question pertaining to technology and uh, education, I think, can be answered uh, from the sector that I think is beyond business, which is the masses itself. In yesterday's forum, we, this presentation discussed about internet, internet connectivity. We have the sluggest, the most, the slowest internet and the most expensive in Asia. And we are second to the lowest, the slowest and second to the most expensive in the world. That is, uh, in spite of the fact, but it's despite the fact we are the texting capital of the world. Uh, if internet will be made fast and affordable, it will benefit not only the OFWs, who will be able to communicate with the loved ones at home, it will also benefit the children in the outskirts because education, college education, may be granted available to them through internet. However, the previous dispensation has perhaps not really looked into the reasons why the internet is very slow. As a matter of fact, uh, there have been organizations in the past trying to request Congress to pass a law defining internet or perhaps amend the law that is being used by the NTC in regulating the internet industry which is, uh, which is the Telecom Policy Act or RA 7925 which was passed in 1995. That law prohibits uh, the development of internet because that law states that only Telcos with 300,000 landline and Telcos with congressional franchise may be granted uh, the international gateway, which is the license that is being used or that is being required to be able to buy bandwidth from the landing stations. So perhaps if you really want the, the business sector and the masses to work with government pertaining to the use of uh, technology, perhaps the department should look into uh, amending or uh, passing a law or uh, requesting the president to issue an executive order defining internet as separate from that of telecom. Uh, because otherwise, no, no businessman in his right mind will invest in the internet technology unless RA 7925 is amended. Uh, can, can I just add to that? Uh, this is also about uh, the same matter. Uh, let me just introduce myself. I'm uh, Simeon Marfori, the second. 
uh, former president of uh, the Davao City Chamber, past president of the Philippine Australia Alumni Association, and currently chapter president for uh, A3. I'm also president and CEO of uh, North Camp Holdings. Um, the gentleman who preceded me uh, uh, made several points, no? and I think I just want to add to that. Um, for me, I think the solution is to deregulate uh, the telecoms industry. Whether it is in one portion only, let's say the internet, or in, the, in all its other aspects, uh, I believe this would be good for the economy. Um, putting a cut, a minimum of 300,000 subscribers, for instance, is uh, counterproductive. If you have more players, especially with the available technology today, which run already into, uh, these are Wi-Fi driven at uh, 2.4 to even 3 gigahertz. No? Uh, there is already this technology is being used all over the world, but it's not being used in our country. Um, there is already technology like, uh, I'm sure those of us use Viber, Chaton, and so forth. And this does not pass through uh, the telecoms, but it passes through the Wi-Fi uh, system and if the Wi-Fi uh, speed is increased all the other uh, communications can pass through that system and uh, accelerate well, not just communication between uh, private business but government and private and government also so the exchange of information and so forth will speed up and that I think alone is the single biggest uh, uh, spur to our progress here. So the regulation for me is, uh, I think, one of the solutions. The regulated evidence in this. Any more cabinet secretaries? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question. So that we will decide which question they will answer. So my question is, uh, many of you wish this man hesitate to come to Mindanao to put up business here. My question is, what would you want the DILG to do in Mindanao so that you would want to come and invest here in Mindanao? Uh, excuse me, uh, can we go back to the previous? My name is Bertolt Taos, I'm the President of the European Chamber of Commerce. Can we go back to the previous questions? with respect to uh, uh, technology. I think we don't have to reinvent the wheel, as Renee said earlier. I think technology is available all over the world. Uh, just remove all the restrictions of foreign companies coming in and you have all the technology in the world that you would want to have in the country. It's really a simple uh, Let me answer the second question also with respect to education. For us as the Philippine Chamber of Commerce, uh, sorry, the European Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, we have signed, co-signed the K-12 program and we have a number of programs within the Chamber, even our young Philippine, uh, our young professionals at the Chamber that have agreed with them to work with the children in different schools, in different levels, to get business across to them. So I think in all aspects there is private interaction with government on education as well. So I answered the question. Thank you very much. I Secretaries. The first one has to do with how can uh, the private sector uh, recommend, or what can the private sector recommend in terms of using technology in government agencies. I was president of the social security system for seven years, from 2001 to 2008. And uh, you have to know that we have about 30 million members. And uh, I heard uh, President-elect Duterte say that he hates seeing the uh, long lines in SSS offices. And um, you can imagine that we have only 5,000 or 6,000 people servicing that many numbers. So we really need technology so that 
they don't have to leave their homes and can be serviced from the um, from their homes through the use of technology. So I would like to request the DOST or the DICT to find a way of looking at what SSS has to continue being able to help us reduce the number of people who visit the SSS offices because we have very few offices. You always see long lines. So that's one agency that will really need your support. The uh, question of uh, Secretary Briones, I would like to inform you that I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Business for Education. And we have done many projects that are of use to the Department of Education. So we will suggest that there be a meeting of PBED with you in the same manner that we have had meetings with uh, Brother Armin and uh, Chairman Tati Liguanan. Um, one of the projects that we have is to find good people who will want to teach and who would like to take courses in education. Because we don't like the situation where if you are not that bright, then you just take a course in education. If you are bright, then you become a lawyer, an engineer, or a doctor. We would like to encourage as many bright young people to go into teaching. Because this is the best way that we can influence the good people to come out of our schools. Um, then my final comment has to do with the comment of uh, Secretary Tugade about honesty in government. I used to be the head of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Even if our clients would like this to be done, then we won't do that job. Or we will exert every effort to get the job done by not paying anything to anybody. I have this sad experience when uh, I was talking to a former cabinet secretary of another administration. And we were talking about one senator that he said was on the tape. And I said, I didn't know that. But he said they had one transaction when he was still in the private sector where he had to agree to pay something to this person. However, after they have agreed on that particular deal, that senator wanted more. And uh, I said, wow, ganun ba talaga? So he, he, he told me, eh, ikaw, anong ginagawa mo? Sabi ko, hindi kami kasi naglalagay. So sabi niya, how can an accounting firm like yours who do consulting work not pay anybody and have your projects approved? I said, that's the reason why it takes us a long time to have our projects approved. But at the same time, we believe that we should not pay anybody. And uh, we explain this to our clients. And in some instances, they appreciate what we're able to do. And uh, as a result of not bribing, we get more clients because they see that we are trying to uh, teach people lessons. But I don't know if many other organizations are in that situation. But with your assurance that uh, your government or your administration will not do that, then that is uh, music to our ears. But it takes a lot of moral courage for an organization to say, no client is worth our breaking our policy that we will not pay any money. And this is how we have done things over the years. Thank you. I would like to answer the issue on the so-called conflict of interest. We in Mindanao once here, both farmers, businessmen, and shippers, as being a victim for a long time on the so-called conflict of interest. Do you know that the bread cost from Davao to Manila is so high, and from Manila to Davao also is very high, that during harvest, when there are a lot of corn, the people in Manila who are in the poultry and livestock business prepare to import corn from Thailand rather than to support 
the farmers in Mindanao because of the so-called very high bread costs. And uh, when the price of oil in the world market shoot up up to 100 US dollar per barrel, I believe the bread trade was adjusted. It was Marina, I think, who is monitoring the bread trade. Now that the price of oil in the world market has gone down below $50 per barrel, there was no adjustment on the freight. It so happened that for several years already, I used to attend public forum being called for by Marina with the shipping companies to increase rate. Now, what happened is conflict of interest with Marina has been penalizing people from Mindanao. These people in Marina is being appointed by the imperial government in Manila without consulting us. So most of the time, the secretary of Marina is being appointed from among retired corporate consultant of the shipping company. That is a real conflict of interest, which is penalizing we people, farmers and businessmen from Mindanao. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a few things to bring up, but the first is regarding technology. Uh, my question is, why is it that um, when a government agency computerizes, services become more expensive, and many times it takes longer, and I'm referring to titling the land regulatory administration. Uh, I am a developer, I'm into housing, and imagine sometimes just to annotate 40 titles would take would last three weeks and uh, it has become very very expensive so i would like to request the third administration to uh, look into this uh, secondly since i mentioned that um, i'm into housing i would like to request the third administration to please put housing into their map into the radar screen uh, I cannot be more dramatic when I say that in 2011, homelessness was 3.9 million. Today, it is 5.75 million. It should never be the perception that a permit is given you simply because you come to my office bearing gifts, inviting me for lunch, inviting me for dinner. I ask you, business community, you expect us not to be corrupt. Can we expect from you not to corrupt us? Thank you very much. We just want to acknowledge the presence of our other secretaries, Secretary Vitagire, ma'am, the DOP. Can you introduce yourself and Secretary Antonar? Uh, I'm Monteteo and the Secretary of Tourism. I'm Bernie Abelli, I'm the Presidential Sponsor. And exactly I mentioned this there and I said, you want us not to be corrupt, do not corrupt us. You want us not to be corrupt, do not bribe and bind yourself through us and gain our patronage. So that if we can have a working relationship, and I have demanded that this at the Grand Development Corporation, and some of you have experienced this with me. Walahum regalo at any time of the day, any time of the week, any week of the month, any month of the year, any year at all, or whatever occasions. Whether it is Christmas, whether it is Valentine, the birthday of my wife, or the birthday of my girlfriend. <laughs> my name is Martin Adonar. I'm the secretary designate for the Presidential Communications Office. Good afternoon, Bob. Okay, so sir, um, our mechanics is that the secretaries will be throwing questions um, and uh, we want the business community to ask how they can help or maybe how they can present um, reforms in the government. So we 
inside as well with your questions. Anyone? A whole lot. And so I said, if you do not wish us to be corrupt, you yourself must bear the burden of not seeking to corrupt us. Avoid inviting us for dinner. All of us know what happens during dinner. Like you, I was, was once upon a time also a businessman. Don't even invite us for dinner. If there is a need, the name of the game is simple. That's true. Let me explain. If you want their needs coming from us, the perception must be such that you deserve that permit. The perception must be such that you got the permit because you are qualified, you are deserving. even have them to work on us. Let me tell the leadership of the back of where I'm coming from. Kung ano ho yung pinaguhubutan ng salita ko. I've never been in government before. And the first time I was in government was three years ago when I was assigned to the Clark Development Corporation.